This is the Galaxy S25 Ultra and if you are seeing this screen on your phone then congratulations on getting the new Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. So in this video we will go through how I set up my personal devices and maybe you can maybe take a trick or two and implement it to your own device as well. So the entire setup process is pretty straightforward but I will skip ahead into some of the things that you should pay attention to. For this screen here, if you're coming from an iPhone or an iPad, especially an iPhone, you can transfer your WhatsApp data using this button here. For Samsung devices, this doesn't really matter that much because your WhatsApp data are backed up on Google Cloud. But for the purposes of this video, I will choose to set it up manually. And this is what I was talking about. So as you can see here, once you log in with your Samsung account, you have to enable these two things. And then here is the offline finding feature so if you hit this button here it will say that it will let you locate your phone or tablet your device in general even if it's not connected to a network so it actually uses the last known location of your device that are pinged via bluetooth i think if not bluetooth then it's wi-fi either way you need to log into your samsung account to use this feature which i find it to be handy because i have located my phone at random locations before and here is the Samsung services. Um, this is going to be a bit more contentious, I would say. So as you can see here, the first option is the auto blocker. There is a lawsuit, I think it's a lawsuit, between Epic Games and Samsung because Epic Games say that they should not have the auto blocker enabled by default. As you can see here, it is enabled by default, but in this menu here, you can disable it if you want to. But for the purposes of this video, I will enable it and show you why in another video. Because I, I personally do think that auto blocker should be enabled. Yeah. And then we just agree, choose your display mode, either you want light mode or dark mode. I will choose dark mode because this screen looks absolutely beautiful in dark mode. And there we go, that is the entire setup process. And it will ask you if you want to download this recommended app. For me, I will disable this because the Samsung Tutor, as you can see here, it just teaches you some of the basic features, which I am really not a fan of because some of these things are a bit outdated. Now, the first thing that you should do is actually to change the navigation. I will hit OK for this because I'm not going to bother with that first. So head to the settings menu, search bar, NAV, navigation type. Now, some of you may prefer the back button on the bottom right side. I personally, if I am using buttons, I would prefer it on the left side because I am using the device with my left hand. Or if you prefer to use swipe gestures, this is where you can enable it as well. So I will stick to swipe gestures in this video. The second thing that you should do is to head back into the settings menu and change the autofill. So if you haven't already know passwords nowadays, you don't really need to type in everything because your device will remember it for you. But by default, Samsung is using their own Samsung Pass feature, which I think a lot of people won't use it. Even I personally don't use it because I use Bitwarden. And this is where you can change your service to, let's just say, Google. If you have Bitwarden enabled, then just select Bitwarden there. Or 1Password, whatever, because you can change the autofill service. Now, once you have done that, the next thing that you have to do, which I highly recommend, is to disable RAM+. Plus. So what Virtual RAM does is that when your device's real RAM, 12 gigs of them, are filled up, it will use part of your storage as the RAM instead. So as you can see here, RAM Plus, it is currently allocating 8 gigs of your storage as your virtual RAM, which is much slower than your real RAM and it will also hurt your storage chip. So what you should do, disable this and it will tell you to restart, just restart it. I promise you, this is a very good step to take in the long run because RAM Plus Actually, for any phone for that matter, this kind of virtual RAM feature should be disabled the first thing that you got the device. The next thing that I recommend you to do is to add your payment method to the phone. 
Now for me personally, I always use Samsung Wallet. So this is where I add my cards. Of course, I have not added any cards to this yet and uh, I will do it later. Or if you want, you can also install Google Wallet because that works with this phone as well. Now, Google Wallet, you can add your own bank cards and use the NFC on this phone to make all of your payments and whatnot. So that works as well. So if you find it to be more convenient to use your phone to make all of the payments, then yes, you can do that as well. One of the big change that One UI 7 has is the quick settings menu or actually how you access the quick settings menu. So now if you swipe from this top left corner downwards, it will reveal the notification. But if you swipe from the top right part here, then it will reveal the quick settings. And if you swipe down once, it will reveal this. Swipe down again, it won't go to the quick settings. You will have to go left and right, which is kind of off-putting for me personally because I always just swipe down twice to go to the quick settings last time. So as you can see, for my S24 Ultra, swipe down once like this, swipe down again for quick settings. I find that to be much more convenient than swiping left and right on the S25 Ultra. And luckily, you can actually change this by doing this. Scroll down, hit here, click this little pencil icon, and then panel settings. And here you can change it to become separate like what we have here from swiping left to right, or just make it together. And then you can also do some customizations like the brightness control always showing or not. I personally, don't really care much about the brightness setting, so I'll just make it that way. And then here is where you get to customize your quick settings, the, the top panel as well. So what happens now is that when you swipe down, it will have all of these, swipe down again, and that is your quick settings. That is exactly how I set it up on the S24 Ultra, and I like it this way. Next up is to download another app, and you have to go to the Samsung store here, hit search, type in camera assistant. I really like this app since its announcement and I will show you why. Once you open it up, you can see you can customize the zoom shortcuts. So you have two times, 10 times or 100 times. 100 times is disabled. And that is why when you open the app now, you can see the shortcuts will only have one, two, three, five, 10, 100 is not there. If we enable 100, then we go back to the camera app. You can see 100 times is there. So camera assistant basically customizes the camera app entirely to how you want. And this for me is not the best feature. The best feature is actually to disable the auto lens switching. So one thing that I find it to be annoying is that if the whatever scene that you're trying to shoot is not bright enough, then it will drop to another lens, which I find that to be really annoying. So disabling the auto lens switching is going to be really good. And another feature that I really like, which is not found in the default camera app, is um, this. Saving videos to your external storage. So if you have an external SSD connected to the phone and you're recording a video, it will now automatically save everything to the external SSD, leaving your phone's storage free. That is really important because I don't have to connect the phone back to my desktop or laptop or whatever to transfer out all of the videos. So having this option is excellent, but I don't know why Samsung hid it inside the camera assistant app. All of these other features are kind of advanced, which I won't go through in this video. So just know that disabling the auto lens switching feature and also uh, enabling this uh, saving videos to external storage option are the only two things that you should deal with. Now we should talk about the H panel. Now the H panel has been around for a very long time, but they did get an upgrade in One UI 7 and it now has a lot more features which I think is great, but this is the default H panel. You can't really do much. So what I would like to do is to swipe out, press in this little gear button here, and here you can enable even more panels. So you can have weather, tools, clipboard, or even a reminder. What it does is when you swipe in, 
This is the apps that you have just now. You can swipe in again. This is the weather. Swipe in again. This is where you have the tools and the tools you can change to all of these things like surface level. Yeah, surface level, torch. And you can actually adjust the brightness of the torch here. And then you also have ruler, which I find it to be really useful to quickly measure some stuff because sometimes I just don't have a ruler with me. This works and you can also change it to inches as well. So just hit that button. And here is the clipboard. So if you have copied any text or images, then it will appear here. Let's just say that I have copied the word test and then I just want to uh, go to the Play Store or something like that. And then I can swipe out. This is my clipboard. I can just press on that. It says test here. This is the preview. You can share it if you want to, or you can just copy it once more and then paste. You can have a lot of stuff on your clipboard. So you can just copy whatever that you want and then paste it in the text field. This is an extremely handy feature. Now, one more thing that I personally do to my devices is to disable fast charging. So head into here, type in battery, and then you can head into the battery option menu. And in the battery menu, you can scroll down and then you can find the charging settings. This is where you can disable fast charging for both wired and wireless charging. I, since I usually charge my devices when I go to sleep and I just charge it overnight anyway, I will just disable these two. And the charging information is on the lock screen here, which I will also disable because I don't really care that much. And then if you want your devices to last even longer for the battery lifespan, you can enable battery protection. So if you turn it on, then turn on maximum will limit the battery charge down to 80% of maximum charge only, uh, which is what I did for the S24 Ultra for the past year. You don't have to do that. You can either use adaptive, which will kind of adjust on how you use your device, which is okay. Uh, it kind of depends on how much you want to protect your battery, but of course at the cost of the battery charge level. So um, depends on how you want it to be. But I will show you yet another feature that I really like. So if we head to the settings menu once more, moods and routines. Okay. This is going to be a very essential feature for me, I would say. So I just talked about the maximum battery level charge and also the fast charging options that I have disabled on the S25 Ultra. But what if I am traveling now? I will show you on my S24 Ultra what I have done with the moods and routines because I think this is a very useful option to have. And this is how I set up my moods and routines, at least for one of it. So. When I'm connected to my home's Wi-Fi router, it will turn off fast charging and also turn the battery protection to maximum. But when the routine ends, which means when I'm disconnected from this Wi-Fi router, then fast charging will be turned on and battery protection will also be turned off. That means whenever I'm traveling or when I'm just not at home, then it will charge to 100% at the fastest speed possible. This is something that you can do on the moods and routines, which is very handy. And there you go. You can even change the order, but the order doesn't really matter here because either one works. And then when the routine ends, you can either have it to return to where it was just now or just don't do anything at all. And then press done, save. Uh, you can rename this if you want. I will just name it to battery. Done. And there we go. I just want to quickly show you what it does. So as you can see here, the routine is now running, which is why it is in this bright purple color. And it also says one routine running. If I disconnect myself from the Wi-Fi router, it will disable the moods and routine. So it will say no routines are running right now. So I would say that if you want to get the most out of your device, you should be using moods and routines with this kind of customization. Oh, one more thing that you should do on your S25 Ultra. By default, it will use 
1080p resolution, you should always change it to 1440p. The only main reason why you should be using 1440p is because you already paid for this screen and it looks better on 1440p, so just enable it. The battery life will definitely be slightly lower, but I think it is worth the trade-off. And if you stayed for so long, then I have one more tip to tell you. So as you can see here, if you use gesture navigation, you will always have this little semi-transparent grey bar at the bottom, which I find it to be really annoying. So how can you hide it? Download GoodLock. Seriously, download GoodLock. I will show you how this can be done. It's actually very simple and I do it for all of my devices as well. So open GoodLock. Agree for everything. And then you should scroll down and download Navstar. Navstar is made for customizing your navigation bar, which we will not actually do any of it except uh, going to swipe gestures, enable extra gesture setting. You don't even have to turn this on. Enable this, then go back to your settings menu, find back the navigation, and then you will have more options. And here you can disable gesture hint. Remember this little bar here is the gesture hint. If you disable it, it's gone. Now you have a full screen display yeah this is for samsung wallet by the way so yeah that that is how you hide the bottom bar on your s25 ultra so those are all of the settings that i use on my personal device from the actually galaxy s20 20 onwards all the way up to the s25 ultra right now so i hope this video helps you out and uh yeah, there are a lot more tips and tricks that you can do on your Samsung devices. If you think that I missed out some of the tips that you like the most, then do let me know down in the comment section below as well. I would love to know what you do with your devices because the amount of customizations that can be done is just amazing. 